wake up in the morning is a job that I'm doing in, in tech, um, integ integrated with my vision and what I want to, where I'm trying to head to in three, four, five years time, right? And there is a reason why I chose that word because that word is really the, is one of the, the pillars of what builds credibility. It is one of the pillars that builds trust, right? The ability to be able to say this and then be able to uh, back it up with this, with your action, is something which most of us don't have. Most of us know that anything is possible, but does our life match it? Most of us know that we have something to offer the world, but does our life match it? And when you begin to get credibility and you begin to get respect and people start trusting you and investing in you and coming to you for advice and uh, and being inspired by you is when you begin to deliver the goods. What you say is indeed what you do. And I wonder, and it's a question that I want to ask you, does your behavior match what you say? Have you, you, you talk about, oh, Kasim, attitude really does matter. Okay, well, would your attitude really be a representation of the kind of life that is capable for you? Have you got a good attitude? The other thing that I wanted to share with you is that in order to become a winner, in order to actually achieve success, in order to actually um, be able to produce the goods, you need to be able to battle, right? Because... In order to become a winner, winning mandates that you have uh, opposition, winning mandates that you fight, you have something to battle. And I've come to the conclusion that the reality of life is that many of us don't want to fight. Many of us, Kasim, you know, I don't really want to argue with anybody. Well, Kasim, I don't really want to have any haters. Well, Kasim, I don't really want to uh, ruffle feathers with anybody. The reality of life is, and, and, and this has been one of the lessons that I have learned in my life, and I would share with you and ask you to think about, is that you can't make everybody happy. There is no way, I'm telling you that, in fact, it's one of the pieces of advice that is given by uh, uh, successful people, right? That is a second most common, given, most common given piece of advice, which is that do what you want, follow your dreams. And the reason why people give that piece of advice is because most of us are not really living the life that we want. We're living the life that gets other people to say, oh, we agree with that. Most of us aren't going after the dreams that we want because they won't get the approval of our parents, right? Most of, I remember when I decided that I was gonna quit becoming an estate agent and I was going to pursue speaking, and I wanted to write books, and I wanted to coach people, and I wanted to inspire people. The, oh my goodness, the conflict that I had from people was unreal. And it's really hard to actually explain this to people, right? It's really, really difficult to explain what happens when you decide to live a life that you genuinely want to live. I, I can't really explain it to you. You have to live it. You have to actually try to do it. Most people do not understand that when you begin to live a life that is true to you, you inadvertently also threaten other people. I talk about it like this. I talk about it that if you decide to hold a mirror up at yourself and you do as Michael Jackson said, which is that if you want to change the world, you've got to start with yourself. If you hold up a mirror at yourself and you take a good look at the decisions you're making, your habits, your attitude, your philosophies, everybody around you is also going to be able to see themselves in the mirror. And a lot of people don't count that in. And that is part of the reason. And so imagine you um, started, this is part of, this is what essentially causes envy and jealousy. What causes envy and jealousy is when me and you come from the same background, from the same estate, from the same neighborhood, and yet you manage to achieve something that I didn't manage to achieve. You know, I remember when I was, I think it must have been something around 20 or 21, something around there. I was invited by a friend of mine, Simon, to his house for his birthday. And me and Simon went to the same school. Um, we didn't live in the same neighborhoods, but we went to the same school. We were in the same year group. Um, we were the same age. 
we like the same things, football, sports, etc. And I went to Simon's house, and when I arrived at his house, Simon lived in what was probably maybe a five or six bedroom detached house, double garage, a garden that is probably 150 to 200 feet foot long, really nice neighborhood. And I arrived there, and one of the questions that I was asking myself is, how is this possible? How can me and Simon go to the same school, we're, going, we're in the same year group, and yet he lives in a five, six bedroom detached house with a double garage, massive house, and I live in a three bedroom, semi-detached house with maybe a 20 foot garden, and I live in a bunk bed with my brother. How is that possible? And one of the things that I began to realize and I didn't realize it at that time, because at, at that time, I wasn't conscious enough, I, was, I just didn't, I wasn't aware enough at that time to really realize it, is that I began to realize that one of the things that really makes a huge difference in our lives is really about how many people decided to become winners. How many people decided that this is a kind of life that they wanted, and then they began to build it, right? If you look at the average person, most of us have the impression that people who are successful, that people who have built something in their lives, built it because they were given it. But that's not what the statistics say. That's not what the data tells us. The data tells us that the average person in the UK who's built something of magnitude, who started from the bottom and built their way to success, started off with nothing. In fact, it, it isn't just that they built started with nothing. The average person who is quote unquote successful, depending on how you define success, is somebody who started off with nothing. They built their way to success. And also they followed their dreams. They did what they wanted to do. And and I'm wondering, and it's just something that I would ask you to think about. Are you living the kind of life where you decided this life? where you made a decision that actually cast, this is what I want, and then you started aiming in the direction of that. Uh, one of the notes that I wrote down here is that turtle steps are still steps. You know, there is a Chinese uh, uh, proverb that says that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. See, most of us, when we look at life, most of us are short-term thinkers. We live in this world today, particularly today, more than any other era of history. We're living in this time where we live in a world of constant, instant gratification. I want it now. And if I can't have it now, Kasim, well, that means clearly I can't, it, it, it doesn't belong to me. That means I'm not worthy of it. That means it's too difficult. That means, uh, you know, it's beyond me. And part of the reason that creates envy, that creates uh, a resentment, is when you're living in a world where you keep seeing people who started off where you started off, who uh, are very similar to you, get what you don't get, what you deserve, what you know you are capable of having. This is part of the reason why I was telling you the Simon story, because with Simon, when I went to see Simon's house, I started getting angry. And the reason I started getting angry and resentful was because I was like, this is ridiculous. How can me and Simon go to the same school, have the same background, and yet he's able to live in, a, in the same house, and I'm not, and I don't live, and he's able to live in that house, and I live in a house which is completely different to his. How is that possible? That resentment and jealousy are fostered because you keep seeing people pass you who are the same as you and you're not getting the same kinds of things. And part of it is that a lot of people have never made the choice to become a winner, they've never carried through on the things that they wanted, and they've never produced the results, right? This is part of the reason why I say that results matter. And so in saying that, when you also apply the Chinese pro proverb of the fact that the next best time to plant a tree is today, you begin to actually work diligently in the direction of the, some of the things that you want. And, and, and my question to you, I guess, is have you decided the life that you want and are you working diligently in that direction, even if it's gonna take you 10 years, even if it's gonna take you 20 years? 
Because the people who end up winning at life, uh, who are overnight successes, are not overnight. They are 10, 15, 20 years in the making. This is part of the reason why one of the principles that I live by is that people are rewarded in public for what they've practiced for years in private. And, and I ask you to apply that very principle to your life. Do what you can in private. Do what you can when other people are not watching you, when other people aren't looking. Because it isn't, people who actually make it get that it isn't, I don't really care that you like what I'm doing. I don't really care that you uh, approve of what I'm doing. I don't really care if I look flashy or if I'm behind or if I'm not where I should be. All I know is I'm on my track. This is what I believe in. This is what I wanna do and I'm gonna do what I can with what I've got and then I'm gonna start working diligently in that direction. Because one of the things that I wanted to also share with you about winning and particularly about small, about small steps is that when you start making small steps and you start winning, what ends up happening is self-esteem begins to rise. And when self-esteem begins to rise, one of the other things that begins to, to happen is that you, the, the, what is possible for you begins to open up. So I said to you earlier on that turtle steps matter. And the reason why I said that to you is that most people don't understand that if you keep small wins every single day compound into a big win, if every single day you keep running two, three, four miles, okay, over the length of the week, you've run two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 16 miles. And so a lot of people don't understand that Small steps, this is why I keep telling people, turtle steps are still steps forward. Small steps over a long period of time actually end up becoming more because if something isn't major and it's not huge, but it's gradual, it becomes normal, it becomes easy. You don't even see that you're making progress. This is part of the reason why you hear so many people say, man, I don't know, I was just working on this or I was starting the business and then one day I woke up and I was just successful. Because to them, they didn't see, they were making such small steps and such small progresses that after a while, what ended up happening is that the small steps compounded into something huge. Okay, this is actually how, and, and there's actually a book I'm due to write about this, about running. This is one of the lessons that I learned. One of the lessons that I've learned about running is that when you run long distances like I do, so I run like, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 miles, right, with those kinds of distances, you cannot run 50 miles by, like, by going 100 miles an hour. It doesn't work like that, okay? You, you cannot do 50 miles by running at the same pace that you will do a 5K in. It doesn't work like that. But what allows you to be able to run 50 miles is running really, really slowly but steadily over a long period of time. Because what ends up happening is you become more efficient, you save more energy, and you just keep going. That's why I say turtle steps matter right? Turtle steps are still steps forward. And what ends up happening is over the long haul, you'll actually end up winning. You've all heard of the rabbit and the hare parable, right? The rabbit is the one who, sorry, the rabbit and the turtle. The rabbit runs ahead and he's all about going really fast, but he ends up getting tired, which, but the turtle takes turtle small steps and he ends up winning. One of the principles that I live by in my life is what I call intensity versus consistency. And this principle means that you want to be take small steps more consistently over a long period of time than go 100 miles an hour every like two, three times a week. So this all came from a guy who I used to, uh, a boss of mine who I used to work with, John. So I used to work with a guy called John Roberts and when I was an estate agent. And John, John said to me, Kasim, I would rather that you come in and make 50 phone calls every single day for five days than come in five days and one day you make 100 phone calls and another day you make 20 and another day you make 10 and another day you make 60 and another day you make 30. He said, no, 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 no. I want you to just make 50. 
make 50 phone calls every single day, five days a week over a year, and you will become more successful than if you come in and make 10 here, 20 there, 100 there, 90 there, 50 there, two there, no, 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 no. Consistency versus intensity. And so what I'm sharing with you is, if you, most people don't understand, if you keep making small steps forward, small wins every single day compound. And when they compound, what ends up happening is, things that were not possible before begin to open up. So this is what tends to happen with runners. So if you're a runner, you will be able to relate to this. So when most people start running, and you've never ran before, running a half marathon seems ridiculous. It seems insane. It's like, how in the world can somebody run a half marathon? Uh, you have to be running for like two and a half hours. It's impossible. But what ends up happening is you train and you run five miles here, 10 miles there, 15 miles here, whatever. And you begin to run a marathon, a half marathon. But when you start getting to half a marathon, you had never even considered running a marathon. But over your training of three, four months, running a half marathon now actually seems easy because you've trained so much. So that what ends up happening is the possibility of now you running a marathon opens up, which you've never considered before. And so this is actually what ends up happening with people. When you find people who run like 150 mile races, which for most of us is like ridiculous, it's insane. How can you run 150 miles over three, four days? It's ludicrous, right? It's like 50 miles every day, it's insane. What ends up happening is that the reason why these people are able to do it is because every time they start running 20 miles and they keep running 20 miles every single week, 20 miles eventually becomes easy. And so then what ends up happening is you end up getting to 60. This is actually what happens with income. And you probably can relate to this. When you earn 15 grand and you earn 15 grand every single month, 15 grand ceases to be that amazing. And so you go for 20 grand. You earn 20 grand, 20 grand ceases to be amazing after a while. You earn 50, this is what I'm saying, this is what ends up happening. I'm telling you that people who earn a million pounds don't think that they earn is a lot of money. Because when you earn a million pounds, most of the people that you know all earn a million pounds, right? Because in order to get to working in a place where you earn a million pounds, the people you're going to be interacting with every day are going to be earning that kind of money. You're going to be going to meetings and conferences where most people at that level are going to be earning that kind of money. So a, hundred, so a million pounds isn't really that much money. Does this make sense what I mean by this? And so it's really important for you to understand and, and, and the point that I want to get across to you is there is loads of things that are available to you at the moment. The issue is you can't see them because your self-esteem, your confidence isn't at the level where you'd even ever consider them to be a possibility, right? There are loads of things that are available to you. Some of you guys, you won't even consider shopping in Habitat. You won't even consider buying cotton or Egyptian or Egyptian cotton um, or silk sheets because at the moment you don't even earn that kind of money for it to be possible. But if you earn that kind of money, those options would become available. You may not at the moment not even shop in Marks and Spencers, right? Because you don't have that kind of money. But if you earned, let's say, a hundred thousand pounds every year, going to Marks and Spencers. It would, you wouldn't even think about it. It's like, well, obviously, of course I'm going to go to Marks and Spencers. What difference does it make if I spend uh, 15 pounds on a, on a chicken versus five pounds? Because that's the difference. To buy a, a, a free-range chicken versus a organic chicken is, a free-range chicken is about five pounds. An organic whole chicken, right? If you buy literally like a whole chicken to roast, a normal chicken that you go and you buy in a normal shop is about five, six pounds. An organic one is about 15, 16 pounds. Now, to me and you, that seems ludicrous. How can you spend 15 pounds on a, on a, on a piece, on a chicken? It's, it's crazy. But when you have enough money, well, that doesn't matter. 
it, it's just like, well, what difference does it make? I want the free win chicken. This is what I'm saying to you. When you begin to win, when you begin to produce the results, things that are available to you that are not available to you currently are going to become available to you. My question to you is, I wonder what you're missing out on because you aren't a winner. Because you won't take the small steps. Because you say, Kasim, when I, everything is perfect, when I have this in order, when I make it there, then I'll put in the effort. Then I'll work hard. I cannot tell you the amount of people who I come across and I hear that statement. Well, Kasim, when I'm 30, then I'll sort that out. Well, Kasim, when I'm fit, then I'll get that together. Well, Kasim, when I'm married, then everything will be perfect. Well, Kasim, like, it's just constant, like, people don't, there is a saying that says, to whom much is given, much is required. But you can flip that and say, much is required in order for much to be given. Meaning, why should I give you the responsibilities of a king if you won't even appreciate the position that you currently have? Why should I make you the CEO if you don't even appreciate the fact that you have a job? Why, in what, why would I do that? Why would I pay you more money if you say that you will only do more when you get paid? Here's what I'm saying. If you do more, then I'll pay you more than you're, more than you're, than you're currently are earning. But most people don't think about this stuff like that. And so this is why I'm trying to share with you that the reason why you're not getting some of the things that you want, the reason why your life isn't as abundant and as joyful and as adventurous as it, it possibly can, it's because you ain't producing the results. You're not winning consistently every single day. And if you don't believe me, look at your life. The other thing that I wanted to share with you, which is really important, which I've learned from, uh, from winning, is that when you begin to win, one of the things that begins to happen is that resources and connections become available. This is so important. I didn't learn this until actually this year. I, this wasn't something that I'd even ever thought about. It's a, a lesson that I learned this year. So most of us don't realize, you know, you know I, I'd always wondered, why is it that I see people who are old, like, not old, they're not really old, but to me they seem old. Why is it that when I see people driving Range Rovers, when I see people driving Ferraris, when I see people living in five, six bedroom houses, why are they old? I don't want to see somebody who is in their 60s driving a Range Rover. That should be me who should be driving that. This is what I began to realize. A lot of people, as you get older, if you become start steadily becoming successful, what eventually is gonna to start to happen is that the people who you know, who you do business with, who you interact with, actually begins to grow. If you keep, uh, so for example, if you're in your job and you keep moving up in levels of leadership, the, the people who you start interacting with in the business actually begins to spread. So if you've just joined the business, most people you interact with are gonna be people in your department, people who you work with. When you become the manager of your department, you all of a sudden interact with everybody. When you become the regional, you not only interact with everybody, but you interact with your store and other stores. Do you understand what I'm saying? And other managers. So now your scope and your connections begins to actually widen. So now you can start, when you're looking for somebody who would be perfect for this team or who can be really creative in this area, guess what you can begin to do? You can begin to look at a widened net based on the connections that you've had, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? But most people, the reasons why but part of the reason why they're not becoming successful and they're not living that abundant life is because they don't know the people who can help them, right? And part of the reason is they're like, well, Cass, I can't get it anyway. They've never made the choice to become a winner. They've never d desired to do anything of significance. They don't produce really good results today in what they've got. So as a result, they don't really connect with too many people, right? And what I've noticed in life is when you become competent, when you become world class, when you begin to do what you do really, 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 really well, you don't need to worry about people find, about going out to find people. People will find you. This is why you have headhunters. What do headhunters do? 
Headhunters go and find people in companies that are doing exceptional and then they try to move them from one company to another company, right? That's part of the reason why you have to have, you, people, people don't even, you don't need to go and find people. They will find you. Most of us do not need to go and, uh, sorry, people who are like, um, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, eye, laser eye surgery, people who do eye laser surgery, you've never seen advertisement really for eye laser surgery. Why? Because there are so few people who do eye laser surgery, that's part of the reason why it's so expensive, that they don't need to advertise because they know that their niche is, they're so good, you will find them, that you will go to them. So that's essentially what you want to make yourself. You want to make yourself so valuable. You want to make yourself so good in an area that people find you. And the reality of life is that most people are not good at anything. We're not consistently producing the results, following through, and as, and as a result, we don't have credibility. We don't have respect. We are not world class at anything. And when I talk about being world class, I'm not just talking about being an athlete. I'm talking about world class as a mother, as a brother, as a gardener, as somebody who does lighting, as a writer, as a chef, as somebody who is a cyclist or somebody who fixes bikes. I'm talking about a domain of competence, one area in your life where people can come to you and say, when people think of you, they can say, I, I know exactly the person for that. And the other thing that I want to talk about, which I mentioned briefly in that, is resources. What ends up happening is, most people don't understand that when you begin to become, let's just say you start saving, let's just say, earlier on I said to you that the worst place that you can be is zero. So if you have no money, and actually this I can link this to one of the things that I wanted to share with you, which is that um, uh, what did I want to do? I wanted to share something with you that I wrote down here. What, what was it? Um, here it is. Small wins give you momentum. When momentum is in progress, small things become irrelevant. I repeat, small wins give you momentum. When momentum is in progress, small things become irrelevant. So, like I said earlier on, I shared with you that the worst place to be is zero. And the reason why I said that is because let's just use, for example, money. And let's just say you have no savings whatsoever. Okay, Every month you're living paycheck to paycheck. In fact, a lot of the months you're going into your overdraft. And I've been there, so I'm not saying that anyone's bad for that because I've been there, I've, I've been in debt, so I can relate to this. So if you are somebody who has no savings whatsoever and your car breaks down, that situation becomes magnified. It becomes huge. It's like 400 pounds when you have no savings is a huge amount of money, okay? If your cam belt goes in your car, it's huge, right? But if you've saved yourself £2,000, you've made the sacrifice, every single month you've put away £100, £200, you've put away 50 quid, whatever it is, and you've gained some momentum, and let's even say you've saved 600 quid, your car, uh, your car uh, breaks down and you need a, a new cam belt or you need a new part, and it's going to cost you 400 quid. That problem just becomes a nuisance. It just becomes like, oh, that's just annoying. But it doesn't become like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. And what a lot of people don't understand is that the more resources you begin to accumulate because of the fact that you're winning, because of the fact that you're producing results, the less of a chance there is for small things to trip you up. You see, one of the reasons why the, the, the single number one piece of advice that is given by successful people is do not give up, don't stop. The reason why that is given is because most people stop the moment things start going wrong, the moment they fall, the moment things don't go the way that they, that they want them to go. Most people don't want to change. Most people don't want to reinvent. Most people don't want to go in a different direction or take a different tactic or take a different strategy. Most people um, are either casting, this is the way it's going to work, and if it doesn't work like this, well, it wasn't supposed to work, right? That's the way most people are. But winners, they change things. They change their attitude. They 
change the teams around. They use different strategies, use different tactics. And in me saying this, what ends up happening is when you begin to do that and you begin to uh, 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 begin to win and you begin to uh, achieve more success, what starts to happen is you begin to build resources at your disposal. So let me use the example of a relationship. And going back to that example that I gave you of the worst place to be is zero. If you have not been working on your relationship, if your relationship is at zero, it is very, and let's say one of you has an affair, one of you cheats on, you, on, on the other person, the chances of you recovering from that relationship is really, 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 really difficult, okay? But if you have been putting in effort and you've been putting in work and you've been together for years and you've fought through loads of things together and you've deposited into your relationship, when one of you cheats or one of you it, some catastrophe begin, begins to happen. I don't know, your sex life is terrible. I don't know, one of you becomes infertile and you can't have kids. It is far, far easier to overcome that problem than if you don't have any reserve in your relationship. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And so what you begin to understand is the more re resources that you have at your disposal, essentially the more options that you have, the more you can throw at the problem, right? And the reality of life is that most of us, we don't live the abundant life that we want to live because partly we have no resources. We have no advice. We have no mentors. We have no knowledge. We don't have any the equipment that we need. We don't have the team. The resources are not at our disposal and resources matter. Now, of course, there is something that has to be said for resourcefulness, right? Because resourcefulness is really important. But resources also matter. For example, if you want to go to university and you are, let's say, 27 years of age, or you might have to go back to college and then go back to uni, you need money. You've got to pay your bills, okay? As much as you can be positive and a good person, you've got to pay your bills. You've got to rent somewhere. So, but if you've had some savings or... If you are somebody who has got another job, those give you a lot more options to play with. Does this make sense what I mean by that? And so I, I kind of want to finish it there, but I just want, and I hope that I've got this across to you, about the importance of getting the results in, about the importance of producing the results. You've got to come through. You've got to actually start stepping in the direction of your dreams because the abundant life lies on the other side of you actually coming through, of you producing the results, of you actually coming through and showing us what you're capable of. It's all very nice you talking about what you could do, what you should do, what people should do about what you're capable of, but are you actually doing it? Are you stepping in the direction of that? Would your life prove it is ultimately what it comes down to right and as i say all the abundant life really does come from the other side of actually following through of actually taking the necessary steps every single day and i hope that you take those steps guys because you know as i've, I've said to many of you guys all of you can really live the most remarkable life i truly believe that that's why you see me doing this video because i believe that that incredible life that you can live of greatness, of joy, of abundance, of adventure is on the other side of you changing or of you developing, of you working on yourself, of you stepping in the direction of that. Stepping. Stepping means it, it is a noun. You've got to, it, it is a it, it is a verb, sorry. You've got to actually do something. You've got to move. It is it, it, do you understand? It's not a stale word, right? So if you do that, guys, I think, man. Imagine where your life could be in five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years time. I think you wouldn't even believe it. So go ahead. Thank you very, very much for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, Casimotive on YouTube, if you like what I shared with you. Um, maybe there's a topic that you want me to talk about that you think is really important. Send me a message. But otherwise, thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.